So I wanted to give you guys an update on the Pago situation. Now this happened, you know, like three or four days ago, so technically I'm a little late uh, in talking about this, but uh, I tried to rally you guys, and I know other progressive shows did the same thing, uh, tried to rally you to, you know, contact your Congress people and tell them, don't support this new Democratic rules package because it has Pago in it and you're shooting yourself in the foot if you do that. And, um, well, long story short, we failed. It, it didn't work out. They passed the rules package, uh, and there were only three votes against, so there were two, and then I think at the last minute, uh, somebody else joined, and there was gonna be a fourth, but he ended up flipping and voting for the package. That was, um, what's his name? Chris Ryan, I think his name is. He's more of a like an establishment type Democrat in the first place. So honestly, I was surprised that uh, he was even thinking about not voting for the rules package. But you had Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ro Khanna, and Tulsi Gabbard were the three that ended up um, taking a stand against Pago. And that means that on the flip side, you had uh, a bunch of people who are leaders in the Progressive Caucus, a bunch of Justice Democrats, and listen, man, it is heartbreaking to see that they supported that rules package. So that means Representative Pramila Jayapal, Mark Pocan, who's over my uh, left shoulder here. You had Raul Grahava, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, Rashida Tlaib, and uh, they all supported the rules package. Now, their argument is, hey, listen, we had negotiations with Democratic leadership and we got all of the concessions that we were going to get. It's that simple. So we got, uh, they were thinking about doing a three-fifths um, super majority to ever increase taxes, uh, and we were able to slap that down. We also got a commitment to proportional representation on committees where progressives uh, would go on those committees. So that's not something we ever had in the past where the left would actually be on the committees that directly craft important legislation. Now we do have that proportional representation, so 40% of these committees are going to be uh, the Progressive Caucus. Now, at what cost, though? You know, at what cost? And the cost was that they're going to put a pay-go rule in the new rules package. So, it, this gets complicated, and I want to walk you through it, but, I mean, the whole point of me doing this segment is not only to give you guys the update to let you know that the rules package passed, but to tell you the, the fallout and what happened since then and things that I don't even know what the hell... It, it, is going on here. So after uh, the rules package passed, and again, you only had three defectors, and it, they were defectors specifically because of Pago. They said this is a dumb policy. We're not. I'm not going to support it. Again, Tulsi Gabbard, Ro Khanna, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Tremendous credit to them because they deserve all of it, taking a stand um, against the caucus. But Representative Pramila Jayapal, a, a day or two after this fiasco, tweets this. Let's get rid of Pago completely. Today, I introduced legislation to get rid of this nonsensical rule that is bad for our economy and for working people. She went on to also say, We have a commitment from leadership and Representative McGovern that Pago will be waived and will not block progressive priorities in this session. Now, let's work on repealing it entirely. So... There's two separate things here. There's Pago, the Democrats put in the House rules that they actively just put in as a House rule. And then there's apparently Pago, the law. And so what they're trying to do here, uh, what Pramila Jayapal is doing here is trying to repeal the law, even though that she and almost every other Democrat just voted to restrict themselves with a rule, a, a pay-go rule that now they put into place. So it that makes no sense. That makes no sense. Here's what I think happened. They saw the tremendous backlash that they got for caving on pay-go, and so they're trying to save face, and they're doing what is effectively a head fake. Now, why do I call it a head fake? Because this to repeal the actual law is not going to fucking happen. That's not going to happen. 
that's going to, you have the Republicans control the Senate and you have a Republican president. And so even if you were to pass it through the House, a repeal of the pay-go law, it ain't going nowhere. So then the question is, why the hell would you restrict yourself in the rules package only to uh, turn around and do a head fake and pretend like you're against PAYGO when you voted for it the day before, the rule, but now you're against the law, but you they know that the law is not going to go anywhere. And also, by the way, let's be clear, it, uh, if it was law, well, it was just completely and utterly ignored by the Republicans when they just did their giant tax scam, which was, uh, you know, 83% of the benefits of that tax bill over a decade go to the top 1%. It gutted the estate tax. It gutted the corporate tax. So if it was a law and it's already implemented, which is the case, then they just fucking ignored it. They just ignored it. Like, okay, we're, not, we're just not gonna, we don't give a fuck. We're just gonna ignore this. And that's what they did. But now the Democrats, when you get control in your own rules for the House, you're gonna do pay-go. Now, why? Well, when you talk to, uh, you know, the, the people who supported it, it's like, oh, it's an olive branch or something to the right. Or it's an olive branch to, you know, the, uh, the, the no labels folks, the third way folks, the blue dog Democrats. And, um, you know, that's something that they like. And it's a way for progressives to show that they're serious about governing. Well, again, the Republicans ignore it. Okay, you are saying you want to repeal the law now, the, the pay-go law, so why would you put that in, in the rules? It just, it makes no sense, and honestly, I got even more angry when I saw, you know, the attempt to save face after they saw the backlash over pay-go, and they fucking proposed this repeal of the law when the day before everybody voted for it in the rules. Like... How how dumb do you think we are? You know? How dumb do you think we are, Mark Pocan and Pramila Jayapal? Now, I like them. And they're, you know, they're on the right side of issues 90% of the time. But you're going to have to stop with, like, the, the fake highfalutin rationalizations of, like, well, we had to shoot ourselves in the foot. And, and by the way, why the fuck would you trust Democratic leadership? Oh, yeah, sure, we're not going to use this to block... Uh, democratic priorities to block progressive priorities, then why put it in in the first place? Why put why put Pago in in the first place if you're just gonna you're just gonna wave it when uh, push comes to shove and it's time to actually uh, propose and vote on one of the progressive priorities like free college or like um, you know Medicare for all? Why would you put it in in the first place? It doesn't make any sense. I need you to to be bold and have a backbone, and actually stand for the things that the people who elected you want you to stand for. And, uh, you know, I want you to stop giving olive branches to the right. Honestly, stop giving any olive branches to the fucking blue dogs and the no-labels people. You're gonna make them fall in line. You know, we covered the story not that long ago about uh, how uh, Claire McCaskill was praising Chuck Schumer. Why? Because Claire McCaskill said, Oh, he always let me vote however I wanted, even if I overwhelmingly voted with Republicans on a variety of issues. He wasn't, he never tried to, you know, whip my vote and, and make the Democratic caucus hold. So he's a great leader in that respect. No, that would make him a terrible leader. The Republicans would never accept that from their people. But even the progressive caucus, all you needed to kill the rule was 18 votes. And you didn't do it. So you know what that tells me? Whenever there's an inkling of a pushback on some of the, uh, you know, key progressive priorities, you're going to have the uh, progressive caucus fall in line. And when I say fall in line, I mean fall in line on the wrong side and then come up with all these rationalizations. Well, we had to do it. We, we had to do it. I mean, what, you wanted us to actually fight and gather 18 votes? When, by the way, the Congressional Progressive Caucus is 40% of the Democratic caucus and you couldn't get... 18 votes to kill Pago? Are you kidding me? You had, if, if just the, the people put into Washington, D.C. by the, the progressive groups, Our Revolution, uh, PCCC, 
Justice Democrats, DSA, if just those Democrats stood together, you would have already had like 14 votes. So you only need to knock off four more. And they didn't do it, and then they rationalize it, and then they rub it in your face, and by proposing a repeal of the law, which isn't going to go fucking anywhere. It's just so disappointing, man. It's so disappointing. It's actually embarrassing, too. Because you just don't do what the Freedom Caucus does on the other side. The Freedom Caucus just throws around their weight like nobody's business. By the way, there was actually a really good article in 538 that came out the other week. And you know what it showed? It showed that um, despite all of the huffing and puffing and, oh, I'm so against Trump that you hear from some of the Republicans, they overwhelmingly side with Donald Trump. The, even the, the, the harshest in tone and language against Donald Trump they still vote with him like 85% of the time, 80 to 85% of the time. So they hold their caucus and they whip their votes and they get what they want. Now, compare that to the Democrats. You know, we've gone over the numbers before, but did you know that Joe Manchin votes with Donald Trump 61% of the time? So the so-called moderate Republicans vote with the standard party line Republican position 85% of the time. And the, the moderate Democrats vote with the Republicans 61% of the time. Guys, this is asymmetrical warfare. So this is why you have an Overton window that's massively far right of the actual people in the country. Because the left actually refuses to stand up and make an argument and hold their ground and drag the blue dogs and whip the votes and make them do the right thing. Or there will be consequences. You literally should tell them, if you don't vote with us, there's going to be consequences, bitch. You want to win your next election? Vote with us. But they refuse to do that. And then they get mad at you. Word was, behind the scenes, that Jayapal and Pokan were angry at the backlash. Oh, were you really? You were angry at the backlash? No, we are angry at you. Okay? We are your boss. You are not our boss. It was the entire left that was melting down and getting angry at you, and they were doing that for a reason, because unilateral disarmament on day one is not something we want, and that's what you guys did. 18 votes is all you needed to slap down the pay-go rule, and by the way, that would have been a shot across the bow. We are not fucking around. Now, they did secure Medicare for All hearings, um, you know, and apparently Nancy Pelosi's gonna allow that. Ooh, wow. <laughs> allowing what, like, 85% of your own party wants and 70% of the country wants implemented, and you're you're allowing it to have a hearing. Huh. Be still my beating heart. How amazing is that? But uh, I'm, I'm just waiting to see all the tricks. I'm waiting to see all the tricks as they unfold because this is, it was not a good sign that they caved on Pago. And they could try to tap dance around it and rationalize it however the fuck they want. But what they did is they spit in the eye of the base. And all of us know it. And your shitty attempt at covering it up of, we're going to repeal the law, even though we just voted for the rule yesterday. It's just, you wonder why people, you know, they get so turned off by the system that they get apolitical, or they start supporting, honestly, total pipe dream third-party ideas, which are never going to happen because... The way, of, the way our system is structured, it's just not going to happen. We already have 32 different third parties federally registered and zero third party people in Washington, D.C. Is that because of a lack of a, a will of the people? No, it, polls actually show people want that. Is that the system is rigged against them. But you'd, you'd have people who rather, you know, spend all their time trying to build something that's never going to work or they just totally check out of the political system. Why? Because of shit like this. You can, <laughs> you ride to D.C. on a fucking giant left-wing mandate, and the first thing you do is, let's do Pago as a rule in our own caucus. That's the best deal we could get because of reasons X, Y, and Z, and we couldn't ga gather, gather 18 votes, even though 14 should have been a given, and you should have been able to, to just pick off four more. But um, they twisted my arm, and that package is connected to this other package, and this package is connected to this package, and you don't really get it because, see, the way this works is 
all rationalization and bullshit. How about you grow a backbone? How about you take a stand? How about your entire party uh, and your entire caucus starts acting like Ro Khanna and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez? How about that? How about that? By the way, they are beloved. You know, how high is their profile now? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ro Khanna. I see them everywhere now in, in, in stories. Why? Because they're actually fighting for the people. And when you fight for the people, you make some noise. It gets kind of loud, and people start paying attention. And then their approval rating goes up, kind of like how Bernie Sanders is the most liked politician in the country. And turns out he's the one who bucks the Democrats and the Republicans the most. So it's funny because they view it as like, oh, God, we have to fall in line. We have to go with the flow. We have to do business as usual. But if you don't do that, and you actually stand up, and you actually have a backbone, it turns out you end up being more popular. Obviously, they heard, they felt the pressure. They heard it. You know, they saw it. And that's why, oh, the other fascinating part of this is what? When J Jaya Paul proposed uh, the legislation, like, oh, we're going to repeal the pay-go law. See, we're with you guys. Um, you had all the other, you had like a bunch of other Democrats really angry that Jayapal didn't include them in the, 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 the launch of this, and they weren't co-sponsors of the bill yet. And then Jayapal later on had to come out and say, oh, here's the list of, look how many co-sponsors we have, we have so many more. Because all those Democratic politicians felt the heat, and they were like, why didn't you, I want to I wanna sign up to the law that's not going to pass, that we're doing to save face, I want to save face, let me jump on it. So, uh, in other words, they really felt the pressure. But it was just too little, too late on our part. And it's a shame. Listen, somewhat naive we were in thinking that, uh, oh, we'll get all these Justice Democrats there and they'll just do our bidding. No, it turns out um, that, and I'm sure this is going to happen again, they're going to let us down from time to time and we need to try to force them to do the right thing every time they do that. Um, so we never take our eye off the ball. And unfortunately, that's the way the system works. If our system was actually functioning properly, we would be able to elect them and then know that they're going to do our bidding. But that's not what's going to happen. That's clearly not what's going to happen. So we're going to have to force them moving forward to do the right thing. And you know what? Don't feel bad about that at all. You know, I don't feel bad about it. Don't feel bad at all. If they don't do our bidding, okay, well, then we're coming after them. And maybe we have to primary some of them, too. Because obviously it's possible to do the right thing. That's why AOC did it. That's why Ro Khanna did it. That's why Tulsi Gabbard did it. So it's just a matter of either making them do the right thing, or if they don't, okay, well then maybe your ass is going to have to get primaried too. And I don't feel bad about that even a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this. Um, oh, we have to hold hands and unity and things. No, 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 no. We have to fight. That's what we have to do. And if you're not going to do it, step aside and somebody else will.